Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. Now today I've got a little bit of a naughty video to view. Now I want to show you this technique. It's absolutely beautiful. It creates amazing results. But um, I'm also going to sneak in a brand new item that isn't even available yet. I'll probably get in trouble for this, but I really want to show you what's coming in my launch at the end of this week i think it is or the it's friday the 12th of april that this range will be available it's only one item i'm not even going to give you the name of it but you will see it and hopefully you'll be in love with it so uh, i do have a craft stash link so you can go along and keep checking the website on friday the 12th for this being available along with lots of other new items as well from my textures range so the first thing i'm going to do to create a beautiful effect is to ink my background completely. So I'm going to do this with my favorite Distress Oxide colors. This is a rainbow blend here. I'm going to go from red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Um, this is kind of a turquoise. So I've got a true blue mermaid lagoon there and then into a purple. I'm going to do this uh, horizontally, I think across, I might, I might even go diagonally actually across this panel of white stamping paper. I'm going to speed this bit up because it does take me about five minutes or so to fill a sheet this long. Large. Now I've got to say when I blended this panel it was hands down the worst bit of blending I have ever done. Uh, I wasn't blending anything in properly, I was just chucking the colour down, then I really wasn't happy with the green either, it looked a bit too vintage for me so I kind of switched that up for mode lawn, a lovely bright green, tried to blend that in. Uh, the whole thing was a disaster really but I knew what technique I was going to be doing with this so I knew that it really didn't matter that much. Now the most important thing with this um, project is to make sure that your coloured panel, your ink blended panel dries thoroughly before you go on to the next stage. I actually put this aside for about half an hour or so in a warm room um, while I got on with some other projects because it just was going to take so long but it needs to be completely bone dry before you uh, start with your stamping and embossing. As always, my best test for seeing if my ink is dry, I don't believe this is dry yet, which is why I'm showing you now, is to sprinkle some clear embossing powder over the surface and just pop it back into the tub and you'll be able to then clearly see where your wet areas still are. So I'm guessing the orange and the green are the wettest. So what I'm going to do is allow that to dry. When that powder will just fall off, then I know that that is completely dry and I can go on with my stamping. Okay, so now I know that my coloured paper is completely dry. I've popped it into my stamp platform and I'm going to ink up this beautiful stamp. Um, I'm going to apply clear embossing ink onto it. So being really thorough with this, because it's clear embossing ink, I'm really going to struggle to see where I've stamped until later on. So I want to make sure, doubly sure, that I've inked every last little bit of the detail in this stamp and not missed anything. And then I'm going to stamp this over all of that beautiful blending that is definitely now thoroughly dry. I did also use an anti-static bag just to apply a bit of powder over the entire surface. Something I also like to do with large stamps, if it's really large, is take away the magnets and then let the paper be on the stamp and press it down from this side of the paper as well. That just helps to capture any little detail that might get missed. If there's an air bubble underneath the stamp, for example, that can often happen with your larger stamps there so you'll just see that absolutely gorgeous i'm uh, really excited about this one okay so now we need to apply our clear embossing powder to the entire flourish this can be done with any design doesn't have to be a flourish like this of course it can be absolutely anything you want whether it's a word die or rather sorry a word stamp alphabets a pattern florals you name it you can do it with any stamped image Obviously, the bigger and bolder, the better the effect you're going to get. There we go, making sure I've got nothing there that where it shouldn't be. It's not because I put that anti-static powder on. I am just going to use my tweezers. I've got a tiny bit of fluff just in there. So I'm just going to remove the fluff and just pop some more powder down there. 
there we go rescued that okay now to heat set that design So I've got my gorgeous glossy flourish there looking absolutely beautiful. Just give that a few seconds to cool down and completely set. And then you're going to need to protect your work surface with a blending mat or something similar. You're going to want some kitchen towel and a lot of water. And now I'm going to spritz over the entire design with the water. Just keep covering it with the water make sure I've got in all that detail give that a few seconds to start working won't take long and then lift all that color up and we've just faded out a lot of the image and left the swirl much 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 brighter now you can leave it like this if you wish which looks really gorgeous. I love that. I think that's so pretty because you've got the much darker ink in amongst the swirl. But I think I'm going to take it a step further. By removing this ink, this now makes the next stage a lot easier, but you do need to let this panel now dry. And I think I'm going to add black directly over the top of this and see those bright rainbow colors through the black instead. So that's completely dry now. Like I say, you can leave that as it is, cut that into, a panel or a peek through an aperture of whatever area you like best and use it on your card but I'm going to cover the whole thing in black distress ink now I'm not going to use oxide because I don't want that chalky oxide look I'm just going to use the black ink which is solid black and we can really see those colors start to pop through And always the best bit is buffing off the excess black from the top of the embossing powder because that makes it even brighter. Look at that, so pretty. Do you know what this reminds me of? Those uh, scratch pads where you used to have the black on them and you used to scratch back and reveal the colour underneath. How stunning is that? Absolutely beautiful. I love that. And can you see what I mean now about the blending really didn't matter how perfect it was because you can't really see that now anyway. Okay, time to pop this onto the background of a card. How awesome is that for a card background? I love it. It's so cool. So there's a technique for you. I'm just going to add the simplest of sentiments to this in white just to make it stand out. But I don't want anything to detract from that beautiful background. And I think that is just enough for a simple card with a fabulous rainbow background that is really easy to create and a lot of fun. Like I say, if you were using a smaller card, I've got a DL here, slightly shorter. I just trimmed the end off to fit the swirl. Um, but if you are using a smaller card base, you could definitely get two out of the one stamped image really easily. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, drop me a comment, a thumbs up, uh, certainly a subscribe if you haven't already. And I think you're also going to like this video here on my channel. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again really soon.